to another salesing.com rules discussion. In this series, we're breaking down the 2021 to 2024 racing rules of sailing. This series is an update to the Fair Sailing Initiative sponsored by the ILYA in 2018. In this video, we'll cover the rules related to exoneration and penalties at the time of an incident. These are rules 43 and 44 in part four of the rules. Rule 43 covers exoneration. Exoneration means that you are freed from penalties both on the water and at protest hearings. This rule states the situations in which you can be exonerated. Rule 43 is a new rule for 2021 to 2024. The rule combines parts of three different rules that previously discussed exoneration. We'll see what those previous rules were as we go through the discussion. Let's start with Rule 43.1 Alpha. The text of the rule is shown on the right. Take a moment to read it. Rule 43.1 Alpha exonerates a boat in any situation in which she is compelled to break a rule because another boat has broken a rule. The wording, shall be exonerated, in the previous rules was changed to is exonerated to clarify that a protest hearing is not required. This part of the new rule came from previous rule 64.1 Alpha, which was titled Penalties and Exoneration. Here's rule 43.1 Bravo. Take a moment to read it. Rule 43.1 Bravo exonerates a boat from breaches of certain rules when she is sailing within the room or mark room to which she is entitled. If you're entitled to room or mark room, you can be exonerated from breaking the rules of Section 2, Part A, and Rules 15, 16, or 31. These are all the right-of-way rules, plus the rules about changing course, acquiring right-of-way, and the rule about touching a mark. This rule could apply in any situation that requires another boat to give room or mark room. Here's a partial list of the rules that require another boat to give you room or mark room. This part of the new rule came from previous Rule 21, which was also titled Exoneration. Here's Rule 43.1c. Take a moment to read it. This rule exonerates a boat from breaches of Rule 14, avoiding contact, if she is the right-of-way boat or sailing within the room or mark room to which she is entitled. You'll only be exonerated if the contact did not cause injury or damage. Be sure to note that if there is any damage or injury at all, no matter how slight, the right-of-way boat will be penalized if it is found that it was reasonably possible to have avoided contact. This part of the new rule came from previous Rule 14 Bravo. Here's Rule 43.2. Take a moment to read it. This part of the rule makes it clear that exoneration means you are freed from penalties. Here are some Rule 43 scenarios. Yellow and blue are sailing to the leeward mark. Blue is clear ahead when reaching the zone. Blue sails wide of the mark, but then heads up aggressively to a close-hauled course, forcing yellow to hit the mark. Yellow protests blue for violating Rule 16. Blue protests yellow for hitting the mark. Which boat should promptly take a penalty, and which boat should be exonerated for breaking a rule? Yellow should take the penalty. Blue was sailing within the mark room to which she was entitled to by Rule 18.2 Bravo. Therefore, Rule 43 applies. Blue changed course rapidly, breaking Rule 16, but she is exonerated under Rule 43.1 Bravo. Yellow broke Rule 31, touching a mark. Yellow was not entitled to mark room and thus cannot be exonerated for touching the mark. Here's scenario two. Blue is rounding a leeward mark inside yellow. Yellow heads up, making contact, 
and forcing blue to head up and hit the mark. Which boat should promptly take a penalty, and which boat is exonerated for breaking a rule? Yellow should take a penalty. Yellow broke rule 18.2 Bravo by not giving blue mark room. Even though blue broke rule 11, which requires you to keep clear of a leeward boat on the same tack, and rule 31 touching a mark. Blue does not need to take a penalty since she is exonerated under rule 43. Here's scenario three. Blue is on port tack with green to leeward. Blue and green approach yellow, a starboard boat, which is an obstruction. Green begins to duck yellow, but does not appear to be giving blue room to duck. Blue heads down to duck, forcing green to head down further. Should blue take a penalty? No, blue does not need to take a penalty. Green owes blue room to duck under rule 19.2 Bravo. Blue broke rule 11, but does not need to take a penalty, since she was sailing within the room to which she was entitled by rule 19. Blue is exonerated under rule 43. Now let's cover rule 44. This rule covers taking penalties on the water at the time of the incident. Here's rule 44.1. Take a moment to read it. Here are the key points. You must take a one-turn penalty for breaking rule 31, touching a mark. You take a two-turn penalty for breaking any of the rules of part two. If you touch a mark and break a rule of part two in the same incident, you only need to do a two-turn penalty. There are two cases in which taking a penalty isn't enough. You must retire. First, if your boat caused serious damage or injury, you must retire. Second, even if you take a penalty, you must retire if your breach of the rules gained you a significant advantage. Can you think of an example of this? One example would be if you come into a crowded windward mark on port tack and follow another boat. You do your turns and lose a few places, but lose far fewer places than you would if you had ducked a pack of boats to avoid following. In this case, you should retire, especially if this was an intentional strategy on your part. There is one change to this rule for 2021. The notice of race or sailing instructions may specify a different penalty or use of a scoring penalty. Previously, this was only allowed in the sailing instructions. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes. Here's rule 44.2. Take a moment to read it. This part of the rule specifies how to take a penalty. Each turn consists of one tack and one jibe. You must take your penalty after getting well clear of boats and as soon as possible after the incident. And when taking a penalty near the finish line, you must be on the course side of the finish line before you finish. For example, if you touch a finishing mark, you must do your one turn penalty, return to the course side of the line, and then refinish. There was a minor change to this rule for 2021. The wording was changed to clarify that the hull, not the crew and equipment, must be on the course side of the finish line before she finishes after taking a penalty. We're skipping rule 44.3, which discusses an option to take scoring penalties on the water by raising a yellow flag. This is not common, so we're not going to cover it. However, Appendix Victor V of the rules contains a U.S. sailing prescription that endorses two alternative penalties. The first option is a one-turn penalty for Part 2 and Rule 31 violations, except two turns when in the zone around a mark. This one-turn penalty is meant to encourage sailors to take the penalty and its use is becoming more common. Another alternative is a 30% scoring penalty. You take the penalty by delivering a written notice to the race office describing the incident. 
The notice of race or sailing instructions will tell you if these alternative penalties are going to be used for an event. Here are some questions on Rule 44. While sailing upwind on port tack, you do not see an approaching starboard tack boat until the last minute. The starboard tack boat alters course to avoid you. There is no contact. The starboard tack boat does not hail protest. What are your actions in accordance with the rules? You should promptly take a two turns penalty, even if the other boat doesn't protest. You broke rule 10, since the starboard tack boat had to change course to avoid you. Rule 44.1 requires that you take a penalty. Furthermore, the racing rules section on sportsmanship in the rules states in part that a fundamental principle of sportsmanship is that when competitors break a rule, they will promptly take a penalty which may be to retire. Here's question two. When rounding the windward mark, your boat contacts the mark. No other boats are nearby. You sail the course shown and continue on. Have you properly completed a one-turn penalty? Yes, you have properly completed a one-turn penalty. A one-turn penalty consists of one tack and one jibe. Turning a full 360 degrees is not required. The pictures at the bottom give more examples of acceptable one-turn penalties at the windward and leeward marks. You may want to pause the video and study these examples. Here's our last question. Five seconds before the start, your boat makes contact with a leeward boat. The leeward boat hails protest. You sail upwind for about 30 seconds to get clear air and then complete your penalty turns. Have you properly complied with Rule 44? No, you have not complied with Rule 44. Rule 44.2 requires you to get well clear of other boats as soon as possible and then promptly take your penalty turns. Sailing for 30 seconds to get clear air does not comply with this requirement. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Also, visit our website at salesing.com for much more content and some unique sailing products.